Wahaha, happy Halloween, yogis. Thank you so much for joining me on this fun, spooktacular holiday. So if you've already guessed it, we are spookifying our yoga practice today. So hop into your favorite Halloween themed shirt or a costume you can kind of move around in and get ready to just really enjoy this practice. These moves were kind of working through traditional yoga postures, giving them some fun names, really just getting into the spirit of Halloween. So make different movements than you normally do. Don't focus as much on alignment, keeping a straight back. A lot of these times we're going to be rounding. We're going to creep ourselves out. We're going to pretend like we're scaring people. Okay, so let's get that inspiration, that creativity flowing. Let's get ready to have some fun. So I will accompany this class with some spooky Halloween themed music, helping us really set the tone for our practice. And like I said, our intention here today is simply to have fun and enjoy the way that we can mold our yoga practice for holidays and different themes like this and see how that makes us feel. So whenever you're ready, we start lying on our backs completely dead in corpse pose with your eyes closed. Finding your position first. Make sure you're settling in, so make any minor adjustments here. Begin to notice how you feel, maybe wiggle out some energy, because when you're ready, find stillness. Become as still and dead as possible. The only thing that should be moving is your breath. Keeping the eyes closed, taking this moment to center and align, get into the fun, playful spirit that this holiday brings. Taking a few more deep breaths here. Really letting the belly expand, become round like a big old pumpkin. <laughs> and release it all. So on your next inhale, I want this move to be really, really sharp if possible. You're going to open your eyes and send your arms up over the shoulders. Big inhale in, like you're rising from the dead. And then connect to the core, flex your feet. We're rising up into staff pose. So basically like rising from the dead, like a zombie, like you're rising out of the grave. Ready, connect to your core, draw the navel in, and reach up, coming to a sitting position, reaching the arms forward. Find your positioning here, keeping the arms forward. Roll the shoulders down for one breath, then really kind of round, crunch the fingers, and we're like Frankenstein. So just move the arms one and the other. Maybe we do some thriller arms here. Feel free to add in some more movements that you find are calling to you. Maybe some thriller arms over to the side, working through the upper shoulders, the back. We can also bend the elbows. Remember, we don't have to sit up nice and tall. We can round, we can crouch down, kind of creep around, just opening up in a nice and fun way. So finding a few more breaths here. We're gonna be mixing it up. I don't know why I'm doing like spider fingers. <laughs> this is all about playing, okay? One more breath. Then let the hands fall to the legs, still in a nice staff pose. Remembering we can always keep our knees a little bit bent. We need to modify, please modify this flow as you see fit, as we don't have a super big warm up. So we're just playing around. So coming into, staying in our staff pose, on your inhale, right hand comes up over the eye. Exhale, peek over your shoulder, who's there? And back, taking these three times, working through with a twist. <sighs> who's there? Let's do one more. 
and coming back around, releasing the hands, reaching for this right foot, keeping a huge bend in the knee. We're coming into a little demented hair in here. So left arm comes up, just kind of splay those fingers out, really round everything, just pulling the knee kind of by the side of the ribs. So just finding a little bit of an opening here, just noticing where you feel it, just holding. Take one more big breath. And then reaching for this right foot, we can hold on to the ankle and just pulling into wherever feels good. If you've seen the movie um, Razor, I don't know if I can even say that word on here. Um, H-E-L-L -L Razor. <laughs> we are now chattering. Chattering as we cradle, a cradle chatter. Almost like you're eating your foot. You're a cannibal now, you're a cannibal. And release. Find the breath to reset here before we take it over to the left side. Big inhale and exhale. Who's there? Inhale, center and exhale. Remembering this is all about how we feel, not how we look. Coming back to center, finding your demented hair in pose, however it feels good to you. Playing around with some arm movements. Maybe playing around with some leg movements, shaking it about, some demented hair in. You can always tuck this leg in too to give yourself more stability if you'd like. Beautiful. And then chattering. Opening up through the hip. Beautiful. Carefully release. And we're making our way into, well, through tabletop first. So take a moment. Find your traditional tabletop because we're going to change it up a little bit. All right, so as we round our back for cat, we're, we're going to be picturing ourselves as a big old black cat. You know, they like raise up on their haunches. So we're going to come up onto the fingertips. If this is accessible to you. And then if so, come up onto the toes as well. So tuck the toes, come onto the balls of the feet. Exhale, really press away around like you're a big black cat. Maybe even hiss. And then taking a breath in, release the lower spine, maybe shake it out a little bit. Exhale, hiss. Don't be afraid to make some audible sounds. The sounds of Halloween. I am really enjoying this. This is making me feel very silly. Really good. I'm loving this. Releasing any spooky energy on your exhales. Any spookiness that is threatening your mind. Let it go. Inhale in. And exhale. Find one more round here. And then carefully keeping the toes tucked or tucking them if we didn't have them before, we're rocking onto our heels. So coming into a little lion pose. So just finding where you can balance. The goal is kind of to have your soles of your feet together, everything together, and that is just not accessible for me. So I can keep my heels together, kind of raise up on the balls of the feet, keep your fingertips low if you need to, hunch over, make it creepy, make it scary, make it ghoulish. And take a little lion's breath. Stick your tongue out, scare everybody away. Maybe you can even go, boo. <laughs> Make it fun for yourself. Release some of that adult responsibility energy. This is our time to explore. This is our time to feel good. Have some fun. Keep breathing. You're doing a great job. One more breath. And when you're ready, take the knees together and release down onto the knees, but lifting up, coming into a little kneeling pose. 
keeping the toes tucked if you wish or flattening them out. Inhale, take the arms up and exhale, cactus the arms, kind of thinking like a, like a scarecrow here. So maybe we take another scary stance or maybe we just find some stillness, try to be as still as possible. Big breaths. Drawing the scapula together. We're scaring those birds away. And exhale, let the fingertips float down by the sides. We're coming back into a little squat, but this is more of a traditional malasana. We're gonna call this bat pose is what we're going to call it. So I'm gonna go from the side just to kind of show you and then I'll go from the front. So finding your little hip opener and your hips might not be that open right now, that's okay. So we're finding what feels good here. And then if you can, lift up onto the balls of the feet. So lifting the heels. And if this is accessible, stopping wherever you need to, keep in mind, take the fingertips to the knees, around through the back, making like little bat wings. So just do what you can, see how this feels. I kind of enjoy, I feel like a better opening in my hips when I come up onto the balls of my feet. And then taking the fingertips, rounding like your little bat wings. This is a nice core exercise here. Breathe through your stability, find your focal point. Maybe tuck the chin in. One last breath. And then we can carefully release the heels, kind of unravel yourself, making sure you are in the middle of the mat. And then walk the hands out. Come up into a little downward facing dog. Press the hips up. Just take a moment here. We're gonna work through some low lunges, some goddess pose. So wake up the backs of the legs, especially if they're still a little tight. I know we didn't have a huge warm up. I was trying to find more of the poses that I felt we could kind of spookify them. <laughs> Find a nice big breath here, really reaching the chest forward towards the legs, the hips up, heels down. Grip through the fingertips. And then gently shift your weight forward, taking this left leg, planting the foot, coming into a low lunge. And this one was going to be a witch on a broomstick. I feel like it's not really what it looks like, <laughs> but kind of into an extended low lunge here. And then we can kind of round the shoulders and like extend the arms out. Maybe we can place hands on hips. I feel like this doesn't really look like which on a broomstick that much, but it probably feels good. <laughs> so really leaning into the pelvis. Release. Release any ghoulish thoughts. Maybe take this time to kind of play with your hand placement, some creepy skeleton fingers. And then on your next out breath, plant the right hand down, reach the left arm back, big inhale, sweep it back towards this right foot as you kind of open through the hips. We can lie this leg down, nectar of the moon is one of the names for this pose. Beautiful. Come back through center, lift up that back foot to turn to the long edge of the mat. Turn the toes to the corners, and when you're ready, lift up into a nice goddess pose. Hands can come to the knees, just taking a few moments to kind of sink down, ground down, root down. Open the hips, maybe wiggle it out a little bit. Ooh. And then the right elbow comes to the knee as we reach the left arm overhead. Big stretch, squeezing the glutes. Return, switching sides, reaching the right arm high overhead, chest is lifted and open. Beautiful, come back up. 
straighten the legs a little bit. We can stay in goddess pose if we want extra lower body toning, or we can straighten the legs, kind of hinge forward a little bit, and then take the arms, kind of in like cactus arms, and then we're just gonna kind of hide our face. I'm scared. Who's there? Making the audible sound effects, if you so wish. Really grounding down through the outer edges of the feet. Still getting a nice activation here, keeping a little slight bend in the knees. This is that time you can work on your fake surprise face. <laughs> and then returning back to goddess pose, turning the toes out, sinking down low. Find as low as you can go. And then reach the arms forward. We might reach onto the mat all the way. We might stay here, but we're coming into a little spider pose. So really sink the hips down. We can kind of send them back. If we would like, kind of coming into a little bear pose variation. And just allow your hands, your forearms to kind of come to the mat, splaying the fingers out. A lot of space here, rounding through the back again. You're kind of making all of your all of your limbs, legs, little spider legs. Beautiful, one more breath. Think scary thoughts. And when you're ready, carefully lift out. Turn to the back of the mat for a downward facing dog, just a breath to reset. Beautiful, beautiful. And carefully reaching this right leg up, low lunge, finding the same playfulness we found on the other side, finding your version of what John of Boom stick. Maybe you can find one that looks a little bit more, resembles shape a little bit better. What John of Boom stick, pretending we are soaring through the sky. Maybe we place hands to knees. Great. When you're ready, find your nectar of the moon pose. Sweep that right arm high overhead and reach for the back foot. Coming back up, lifting up this back foot to turn to the long edge of the mat, but coming down into a straddle pose. All right. And now we're gonna stir the cauldron, stir all of our potions, all of our witchy spells, and we stir the pot. After we've added all the ingredients, like flexing our feet, rolling the ankles back, lifting up, now we stir the ingredients, and we open the hips every breath. Beautiful, yeah, just be love it. Keep thinking about your potion. What spell are you creating? A few more breaths. Work through those hips. Yeah. Beautiful. And returning back to a nice neutral spine. You can take the legs in for a moment. I am planning to end this practice in a little child pose, trying to make a little variation of like a pumpkin. That is not really what it looks like. Maybe a rabbit pose. So we are just ending this practice with some breath awareness to see kind of how this creativity made us feel. So find a position that works for you. And kind of round here. I don't even know if this looks like a pumpkin. Probably not, but that's okay. This feels good. That's all we're here for. Noticing how you feel. Tapping in to that playful, childlike energy. 
We all need that every once in a while. So I hope you enjoyed this fun little flow. And I would love to know what your experience was with it. Coming back to the breath, noticing its rhythm after all that jazz. And staying in your resting place for as long as you need. And whenever you're ready, coming up to a gentle seat where I thank you for joining me today on this special fun holiday. I hope you have many, many fun Halloween plans and you enjoy the rest of your evening. I would really like to know how you enjoyed this practice compared to the traditional practices. I think it's fun to switch it up every once in a while and I think the holidays are a great excuse or reason to add some fun creativity into our days. So thank you again for joining me here on the mat and for tuning in to Yoga with Paige. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already. And I will see you next time. Have a spooktacular rest of your day.